The multiple endocrine neoplasias, or MEN for short, are a group of inherited diseases which cause tumours to grow in the endocrine glands of the body. The endocrine glands that can get affected in multiple endocrine neoplasia are the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands, the adrenal glands and the pancreas. So, in multiple endocrine neoplasias, there are tumours that form in these glands and that leads to overproduction of the hormones that they produce. So a logical way to do this will be to go through the glands that are affected and talk about what they do. The pituitary gland is a pea-sized gland found at the base of the brain and that makes the hormones that control many of the other endocrine glands in the body. These hormones include thyroid stimulating hormone, which acts on the thyroid to make thyroid hormone, adrenal corticotropic hormone that acts on the adrenal glands to make cortisol, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which acts on the ovaries and testes to make oestrogen in women and testosterone in men. So it's the boss, right? It's like the king of the endocrine glands, telling them how much hormone to produce. Now, as if that wasn't enough, the pituitary also makes growth hormone, which makes you grow, funnily enough. It also makes prolactin, which stimulates milk production in women, oxytocin, which triggers milk release, antidiuretic hormone, which helps the kidneys to reabsorb water, and melanocyte stimulating hormone, which helps the melanocytes to create more melanin, or pigment. Next on our list, we have the thyroid gland, which makes thyroid hormones, and they control metabolic rate. It also makes calcitonin, which is a hormone that decreases calcium levels. Within the thyroid gland are buried four parathyroid glands, and these make parathyroid hormone, which, quite on the contrary to calcitonin, actually increases calcium levels. So, moving down the body on our whistle-stop tour of the multiple endocrine neoplasias, we've got the adrenal glands, which sit just above each kidney and produce epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are the hormones that we're referring to when we talk about the fight-or-flight response, and they're involved in increasing cardiac output, dilating the pupils, and increasing blood flow to the muscles. You know, the kind of stuff you'd need if you were going to fight. Or fly, I suppose. Finally, on our journey down the glands, we have the pancreas, which makes insulin to help lower blood sugar, and glucagon to help raise the blood sugar. The pancreas doesn't stop there, though. It also makes gastrin, which increases hydrochloric acid production in the stomach, and vasoactive intestinal peptide, which relaxes the intestinal wall and allows food to pass. But how do they come about? Well, multiple endocrine neoplasias are caused by genetic mutations to one of two genes, either MEN1 or RET. Both of these genes have a dominant inheritance pattern, so you only need one copy of the mutated gene to get the disease, unfortunately. The MEN1 gene is found on chromosome 11 and is a tumour suppressor gene, which means that normally it's able to stop itself from dividing uncontrollably. A MEN1 mutation causes multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. On the other hand, RET is what's called a proto-oncogene, which promotes normal cell division, and when it mutates, it becomes an oncogene, which promotes constant cell division. Mutated RET causes multiple endocrine neoplasias type 2A and 2B. In multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1, there are three types of tumours. Those are parathyroid, pancreatic and pituitary. The most common type of tumour is a parathyroid tumour. An increase in parathyroid hormone causes increased bone breakdown, which leads to hypercalcemia and calcium kidney stones. Pancreatic tumours can cause problems based on the type of hormones they produce. A gastrinoma produces gastrin, which increases the amount of hydrochloric acid in the stomach, and this can cause peptic ulcers, abdominal pain and vomiting. Insulinomas produce an excess of insulin, and since insulin lowers blood sugar, you can end up with hypoglycemia. While a glucagonoma causes hyperglycemia because it promotes the breakdown of glycogen to release glucose. The pituitary gland develops non-cancerous tumours called adenomas, and these usually make an excess amount of at least one of the many hormones that are produced there. The most common is a prolactinoma, where there's excess prolactin, which causes galactorrhea, or milk production in women who aren't breastfeeding, and gynecomastia in men, which is breast tissue growth. 
Next, there can be excess growth hormone, which causes something called gigantism in children, which is where they grow really tall, or acromegaly in adults, where they have enlarged hands and feet, a large forehead and a prominent jaw. A handy little way to remember the two most common hormones released by pituitary adenomas is the phrase, lots of milk leads to giant kids, where lots of milk refers to prolactin, and giant kids refers to growth hormone. In multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2a, the most common problem is thyroid medullary cancer, which develops in virtually everyone with the disease. This type of cancer forms from the C cells in the thyroid that produce calcitonin, and it can metastasize to other organs through the blood. The adrenal glands form tumours called pheochromocytomas, which make too much epinephrine and norepinephrine. This results in high blood pressure, anxiety and sweating. People with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2a can also develop parathyroid adenoma, but unlike in type 1, only about half of the people will develop this type of tumour. Moving on to multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2b, the type of tumours are the same as 2a, thyroid medullary cancer and pheochromocytoma, but there is no parathyroid adenoma. Instead, they have multiple neuromas, which are tumours that come from the nerve tissue in the skin and the mouth. So, as you can probably imagine, the symptoms of multiple endocrine neoplasia depends on the type of tumour and the hormone that's produced, as well as from the mass effect and the local inflammation from the tumour itself. In men type 1, a pituitary adenoma might press on nearby brain tissue, causing headaches or it could press on the optic nerves, causing vision problems, such as bitemporal hemianopia. In men type 2a and men type 2b, thyroid tumours might compress nearby organs in the neck, causing hoarseness, coughing and trouble swallowing. In men type 2b, neuromas typically grow on the tongue, lips and roof of the mouth. Multiple endocrine neoplasia can be diagnosed by genetic testing to find out the underlying genetic mutation. When it comes to treatment, the genetic defect can't be treated, but the tumours can be cured with surgery if caught early. If type 2 is diagnosed, then a thyroidectomy will inevitably be performed, and this is to prevent thyroid medullary cancer. The thyroid may also be removed in the family members of those who carry the defective gene, and this is to prevent thyroid cancer in the future. OK, so that was a real whistle-stop tour of multiple endocrine neoplasias. So let's go over some of the key points. Multiple endocrine neoplasias are divided into three types, type 1, type 2a and type 2b. Men type 1 causes parathyroid, pituitary and pancreatic tumours. Type 2a and type 2b cause medullary thyroid cancer and pheochromocytoma. Type a also causes parathyroid tumours and type b has multiple neuromas instead of parathyroid tumours. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.